Hi there, Bob from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time, and today I'm really excited to show you an X Particles tool that is a bit underutilized, which I use every single day. It is XP Console, and it'll help you uh, when you're doing things like setting up Nexus questions or when you're data mapping to know exactly how the particles are behaving. What is their maximum speed? What is the distance that they've traveled? What is their size, their color? It's really, really useful, and I would urge you to include this into your workflow. Let's have a look. In our scene, we have this simple but quite nice wispy particle sim. It just uses a basic turbulence and a drag, and we're coloring it using an NX color modifier. So we're mapping this colorful gradient to how far the particles have traveled, distance traveled. But there is an issue here. If you have a look, we're not getting any red particles. And the reason we're not getting red, even though we have red in our gradient, is that we haven't got the min and the max amounts correct. Um, and we don't know actually how far the particles have traveled. Now we could guess by sliding this slider, which is fine, just eyeball it, but we can be really precise by utilizing the very underused X Particles console tool. So that is in Insidium, X Particles, Utilities, and XP console. It brings up this console and this displays all of the particle data that every single individual particle is carrying at any given frame. It's really powerful. Now, I like to have this as a, a quick icon um, in uh, my uh, palette here. So let's get that set up. Just go to Window, Customization, Command Manager. And in this window, let's just type in XP Console. There it is. And all we need to do look, is drag this up into our palette here, let go, and now we have that um, uh, shortcut. So if we click on the icon, here comes our console. So let's have a look at what we've got. By default, we've got these two channels of data visible. The particle ID, each particle has a unique ID number, and we also have the age of every particle as well. And if I scroll down, you'll see we've just got thousands and thousands of particles. So what we want to do is look at how far each particle has traveled. So let's go to the data to display and add a channel. We'll put a distant channel in, and now we have got the distance traveled of every particle. Now, we need to know what the max distance is, and it would be very time consuming going down here and working out what the max is. But there's a brilliant shortcut in this tool. If we double click on any of these numbers in the channel, let's double click, we get the minimum and maximum of that channel. Brilliant. So look, this distance traveled maximum on this frame is 652. So that's giving us pretty much the maximum range. Let's just type a little bit lower than that in here to make sure we get plenty of red. Let's just put 620 now that we know that precise range. Let's shut down that console, hit play. And now we are using the full range of our gradient. Yep, look, the furthest traveled ones are getting the red particle coloration brilliant. Let's just demonstrate this with a different channel. Instead of gra uh, the gradient parameter being the distance traveled, let's do it with the particle speed. So again, we need to know what's the maximum speed. Let's go to our console with our new icon button here. Look, go to data to display, bring in the speed channel, double click, and we've got a min of two, maximum of 205. Brilliant. So let's just shut that down. I'm going to put my max at, say, 195, so slightly under, just so we get the chance of having plenty of red ones, and hit play. And now we're getting the full range of that gradient used in our co uh, the coloration of our particles. Fantastic. So that gives us really, really precise data when we're mapping these ranges. So this is really useful for when we're using the color modifier. But remember, whenever we do any kind of data mapping in our modifiers, if we went to the turbulence mod to the mapping and we added a distance traveled map. Let's have a look. Um, particle distance, mapping that to the turbulent strength. We need to know the range of how far they've traveled. And we know using our XP console that we have this range of distance between 0 and 633. So we can do 0, 633. And now 
we are only going to get turbulence affecting these particles once they've travelled up to 633. And we've been absolutely precise about that because we could get that precise data from the XP console. So we've hardly scratched the surface of all of the data that's available to view for every single particle in this console. Uh, but as you can see, it is really useful. I use this almost every time I open Cinema 4D with X Particles and Nexus, and I would urge you to give it a go. It's really good.